Hello, and welcome to the Metaphysical Universe, where we dive deep into all things spiritual and metaphysical. Today, I'll be interviewing Corby Midlide, who is a certified Tarot Master and Reader, and a trained medium and past life specialist. Corby prides herself on being a practical intuitive, not someone who spouts mystical pretense. Today, we'll be talking about what a real psychic does and the tools that they use and the things to look for when getting a psychic reading. So let's get right into this. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me today, Corby. I am so excited to have you here and sharing your wisdom and expertise all about understanding more about what it means to be psychic and psychic tools and all this good stuff. So firstly, can you tell me a little bit more about you and how you even got into this field? Sure. This is what I call the... um 30 second elevator speech. <laughs> when I was nine, I read a book called The Witch Family by Eleanor Estes. And I thought, wow, there's magic in the world. I want to go find it. Fast forward to 1973, when I was a senior in high school, there was the Live and Let Die movie with Jane Seymour as the fortune teller. Spencer Gibbs had the James Bond 007 tarot deck. And I bought it because, you know, we were all hippies then. You had your elephant bell bottoms and your fringe David Crosby jacket and your deck. So five years later, everybody else had moved on to roller skates and disco balls. But I love the cards. I love the stories they told. So for 20 years, I read for friends, making sure that I could keep my ego on the shelf and be a clear channel for the message. All of a sudden, in the early 90s, I could do hands-on healing and talk to dead people with no training. That's when the universe handed me my draft notice and said, hello, you're working for us. So I did it part time for a long time until 9-11 when the towers burned. And I turned to my husband and I said, I'm going to need to do the psychic work full time. People need to know there are other answers out there. He said, mm -hmm. I believe in you. Go do it. Since then, six days a week, 14 hours a day, I read a thousand people a year and I get to get up in the morning. I don't have to get up in the morning. That's the best part. Wow. Yeah, that's so amazing, too, that you're doing the. Th I mean, it sounds like you're doing the things that you love. So you say that I, I get to get much. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's fantastic. And then are you still doing the, the healing also or just mainly the psychic work? The healing work, I was never trained. So, you know, I offer it, but mm -hmm. it's not part of my, you can read it on the schedule. Um, for instance, if you and I were at an event and I saw you were having a headache or something like that, I would come up to you and politely say, you know, sometimes I can do hands-on healing and remove pain. Would you like me to do something for you? Mm. Now, notice I ask. And if yeah. you said no, I just nod and walk away because that's your choice. That's your free will. That is not what I call a drive-by psychic shooting. And you know, the examples that I use, uh, Teresa Caputo on the Long Island. News, I was just going to say her. Yeah. yeah. Someone is feeling up a cantaloupe in Wegmans and she walks up to them and says, excuse me, your rear door says you have a bald tire in the back and you're going to die in a week if you don't get it fixed. Just telling you and walks away. No. For one thing, her PR people go out and scout all the Wegmans on Long Island, pick one, mm -hmm. interview a whole bunch of people and then have them sign legal model releases and then rehearse it six times. Really? So, yes, that's the truth. If someone who is genuine would come up to you, let's say, uh, Reverend Shirley, you say from Lilydale, she is a registered spiritualist there. She might come up to you and say, excuse me, but my name is Reverend Shirley, you and I am a spiritualist from living from Lilydale. I believe I have a message for you. May I come to you? Those five words, may I come to you are the magic formula. And if you say yes, she'll deliver the message. If you say no, she'll nod and walk away because she knows spirit will give you that message however it needs to. It doesn't have to be her. Yeah. And when it comes to healing, um, I'm reading 11 hours a day at some psychic fairs and I have a neck ache and I'm doing this. And some glurpy purple with angels, little dancing raccoon person comes up and says, hi, I do healing. Let me help. And she comes at you like this. 
And I say, no, thank you. No, really, I can't. I'd prefer you didn't. Just let me back off. You're not very love and light, are you? Well, you didn't listen. Yeah. You know, I tell my clients and anyone in my lectures, you have a right to say no. No one has a right to give you a message, put their hands on you, do anything you do not want. And if they keep trying, you find whoever is in charge, office manager, store manager, and you report them as harassment. I'm not kidding. Yeah. That's the kind of person that makes other people scared of psychics. Yeah. They think we have no boundaries. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of them don't, <laughs> you know, exactly. Mm-hmm. Just like you're saying. And I think that, you know, like ethics, like you said, boundaries and and psychic ethics and things like that are such a big part of like, you know, what we do. It's mm-hmm. important to make sure that we have those ethics and maintain those ethics. So I know there's all sorts of other, you know, things that we need to consider, you know, that with ethics too, what other things would you feel are important for? Or, you know, a reader, a psychic reader to maintain is their ethics. Um, that comes up to what I call my um, 10 rules for uh, professional intuitives. And those are in my book, Clean Out. Uh, you've got the magic who needs a genie. This nice. is what I wrote after 18 years on the road. I'm off the road, but there are other people who do it. Mm-hmm. So... I am more than happy to share that information. And one of the first things that you need to understand is you have to be the intuitive you would like to consult. Mm. Do you want to be treated with respect and courtesy? Do you want to be listened to? Do you want to avoid being upsold or told you have a curse? And so buy the $600 candle, then that's who you are. It's also in your table side manner. There are a lot of people who like or think that we're all supposed to be like what I call the glurpy purple with angels. Hi, I'm a little dancing raccoon, and here's my spirit guide, Arctic Bear. We're going to talk to your angels today. And me, I want to vomit. I'm from New York. I'm sorry. Yeah, I feel So that. you've got to be able to handle me. I'm funny. I'm practical. I'm straight ahead. And I pull no punches. Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of psychic I would want to go to. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one is accept that you're not in this to be rich and famous. No. Teresa Caputo, great, wonderful. She signed a contract. She does whatever they tell her to do and she makes money. Um, several years ago, I lost a reality show because I wouldn't let them lie about me. Now, Nobody can do what you do. You're so special. You're amazing. I went, no, you can't because I make a point of telling people I'm not special. You can do what I do. Yeah. And they shrugged yeah. and they pulled somebody else off the street. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do this because we love the ability to help and to heal and to guide. Yeah. Now, do I make a living at it? Yes, but I've been doing this professionally full time for years. So it is an energy exchange and that's fine. You're allowed to charge money. Yeah. But remember, bad money, bad energy. If someone wants you to do something, you know, you shouldn't like remote spying, or you know you're not reading correctly, but they keep coming back to you and you just shrug and you say, okay, fine, then that's bad money. You don't do that. Yeah. Um, The next thing is, frankly, don't spy. Don't spy means don't listen to what another psychic is doing and think that you're able to judge them, make a decision, et cetera. The example was um, there was a show I was doing and, you know, it was the typical show. You're all lined up 10 by 10 booths, but, but open space. And the person who was sitting with me had come to me four years in a row with the same stuff. And I told her the same stuff for years. And I was giving her a clue brick upside the head and saying, look, this is the last time I'm going to accept that you're going to see me. Because if I've been telling you all of this and you agree with it and you're not doing it, why are you wasting your money and my time? Mm -hmm. And the psychic, one booth down, heard me say that, told everybody else I was so rude and so cruel and I didn't have any business being a professional and, 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 gossip, gossip, gossip. She didn't know any of the backstory. She didn't know why this person needed to hear that. And it was very 
difficult for me not to step into the ring with her. Yeah. But I was not going to stoop, stoop down to that energy. Okay. You don't diss another psychic unless you know that they're dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, I will always recommend people that I know are good. I have a very big networking map that way. But for instance, there were a couple of people. One of them always told women that they were his slave in a past life or, you know, and that oh. kind of sexual harassment. Wow. You know, that's it. Um, somebody else had a very questionable way of reading. Um, this is someone who said he could read hair, loved young girls, and he would be playing with their hair in the booth. Ooh. No. Ooh. Yes, ew, slime. Um, so I'm not going to recommend them. In fact, I may warn people against them. Mm -hmm. But it, there was one psychic who I always try to get a reading from these people to see what they do. Can I recommend them? And I remember that I sat down with her and I had my wedding ring on. And the first thing she said was, oh, God, there are no men in your life and you're so lonely. And I just kind of thought like this. And I didn't diss her to anybody, but I never recommended her. Right. Okay. Um, but we're all networking in this together. Yeah. If you find someone else does geographic astrology, the kind of thing that helps you decide where to relocate, and you don't do that. If someone comes to you and says, I'm looking at this, you could say to them, well, I can throw some cards on general areas, but Mike next door does relocation astrology. He's really fabulous. Example with me specifically, I'm kind of your general practitioner on health, but if you have something serious, I will send you to my best bud, Stacy Wells. I consider mm. her the best medical intuitive in the US. Mm. She can literally see in the DNA of your body. And that means, A, I'm not in this for the money. I'm in for service. B, I'm not afraid that people will take my clients. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons I help rookies. Bring them to my booth, show them all my stuff, help them set it up. I teach rookies. I have classes for them. Because no matter how good they are, they are not me with 50 years of experience and 50 years of life experience doing this. Mm -hmm. They are no threat. Besides, at age 69, in 20 years, I may be dead. Somebody's going to have to take over. Might be them. Yeah. So you share. You share and you don't get scared. Yeah. Yeah. No, and these things are so important. It's so important to have, you know, these ethics and maintain these ethics because, like you said, with Teresa and things like that, you don't want to be going into other people's space. You don't want to be reading, you know, their dirty laundry and the things that are going on in their lives without their consent. Like none of this is acceptable. And so many people like do these things and think that it's okay. So yeah, I'm I'm all about teaching those things. Yeah, so um, oh yeah, go ahead. You had a did you have more? Uh, just an example for that. Yeah. There was a woman who came to me and said, I want to know where my husband is sleeping with his mistress. I said, I'm sorry, I don't do remote spying. Oh, yeah. well, how many mistresses has he had? I don't do remote spying. No. God, you're no good. Well, is he going to die soon? Is he sick? Am I going to get any money? I gave her her money back and got her out of the booth. Yeah. You don't pull that kind of thing with me. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and people, people want us to, you know, push, you know, beyond the boundaries and mm -hmm. yeah, it's just unacceptable. So, you know, and another thing, like we had talked about this briefly before and, um, you know, like we're both in this similar field and uh, helping people to understand that they have these abilities, um, you know, and firstly, understanding that we all have them, right? Mm -hmm. we do. <laughs> but, you know, and, and understanding more about the, what was I going to say? The, um, yeah, well, let's first go into that, you know, that people think that we don't have these abilities or that they're gifts, you know, that there are only a few people have been born with these particular gifts or abilities. And, and, but also the belief, wait a minute, that do we all have these? So I'm curious on your take, is it a gift or do we all have them? Like, what is the, the example I use is we all have 10 fingers. We can all sit down at the piano and play chopsticks. 
some of us really like the idea of playing. And so we practice, we learn our skills and our skills. And so we get really good. Yeah. One in 10 million is Elton John. Right. And that's how you look at psychic work. Okay. Yeah. Am I an Elton John? No, I'm not that egotistical, but I've been practicing for years. So I'm good. Yeah. And I have found what I love to do. And that's important because when people are just starting, they think they have to know everything. No, you don't. Yeah. When spirit hands you your draft notice, it goes rifling inside you to see what you got. Me, theater major at Brown University, acted in New York, so I know characters and story arcs. Mm. Words are my drug of choice, so I can tell the stories. And I have loved history since I was a wee thing in single digits. Put that together, and what are my best tools? Cards, tarot and oracle cards, because you tell stories, and past life retrieval, which is not mm. regression. I am not a hypnotherapist. Right. I'm the one that when you say, why am I afraid of wet hair in my face? I go up to the Akashic, pull down the book and say, chapter two tells you about this. And I'll be able to give you the story. Oh, that would be fascinating, too, because like there was a point in my life where actually it was like probably 20 or 30 years of time where um, I couldn't like sleep with my neck uncovered. And I would always have to, and it felt like there was this um, like cool breeze, like sh kind of feeling against my neck. And so like, I tried to do my own like past life retrieval for that information. I felt like I got pretty close with the details, but it's fascinating how, you know, those, those things, you know, can come into play, you know, in our reality. Well, the yeah. other question that I wanted to ask you that I kind of like had separated from, um, you know, the, the frustration that we had talked about previously was that, you know, to get people to understand that, um, and I don't know how to ask this question. This is why I'm kind of stumbling with it. Um, that people don't generally want to be psychics, right? That they, they, they want, like, I have a hard time getting people to understand that, you know, they can learn how to do all these things, themselves that they have the tools they can access all these things that essentially you know and i explain it in the way that you know we are energetic beings right and so just like you know we have physical senses in our physical body we have energetic senses in our energetic body and these are our psychic senses and so like you have them and like you were saying it's just whether or not you know like we're using them actively and developing them you know how they're going to get there but people like would rather just be like tell me tell me the they're things because yeah are inherently lazy you know we all have 10 fingers but they'd rather buy our, uh music online um they could learn to cook but they'd rather go to a restaurant um they could learn to decoupage something but they'd rather go to target people don't want to put in the work unless it drives them mm. so that's all it is. And also, we are an instant gratification society now. Right. Okay. So now why should I waste time trying to do it myself? Well, you know what it is. You, it's like going to a Russian lit class. You get a handed war and peace. And you hand it back to the professor. And say, Look, you read this. I, I want to do this. this. Just yeah. give me the cliff notes and tell me what to say on the test. Okay. We're good. Yeah. Yeah, but then the the challenge too. Yeah, the challenge though is that then you're relying on like that person deciphering that information correctly for you, and then them being like that vessel for the information, and then being a clear vessel and just saying like a lot of a lot of psychics will try to interpret the information for you instead of just saying what they're getting, mm -hmm. you know, and so that can be another big problem as well. It's part of it is we are human. Even the best mm -hmm. of us are only 85% accurate. The yeah. only one 100% accurate is God, and God isn't doing readings on Zoom. <laughs> um, we have to trust what we hear. And sometimes it can be more correct than we know. I was reading for a couple in Kitchener, Ontario. And I remember I pulled a card that's the Three of Pentacles. Normally, that card shows stained glass window in a church and somebody working on it. And it means mastery, long-term job, whatever. But I looked at the card and looked at them and said, I have no idea why I'm saying it. 
but there is an abandoned or deconsecrated church within a couple of miles from here, and you're supposed to open up a cafe bakery. Yeah. I'm thinking they'll think I'm nuts, and they look right. at each other and they nod. They, yeah, we've been arguing about that for two years. Yeah. That's when you know you're the clear channel. Yeah. Um, but it also means sometimes you have to decide where your arena is. And I've got a mediumship story, which I don't know if I told you. Mm, I um, don't know. Do you want the PG or the R version? Uh, either is fine. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this was in upstate New York many years ago. It was a biracial, same gender couple. The black mm -hmm. partner had died and her white widow wanted to speak to her. Okay, see this face? Nice kid from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I have manners. All comes out of my mouth in urban oh. ebonics was, well, shit, if it ain't my white bitch. And I'm going, eee! but the woman in front of me starts, she breaks up laughing because that is what her partner, Isabel, said every time she walked in the house after a business trip. Uh -huh. now, yep. When our egos are in the way, we would have said, oh, I can't say that. And she would have missed the message. Right. At the same time, I am not comfortable standing up in a crowd of 200 strangers doing mediumship. And that comes out of my mouth, which is why I will not do mediumship in public. It's always one on one. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, past life galleries, I've done them and they're easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Yeah. Oh, God, <laughs> that would definitely be a little, uh, little much in that moment mm -hmm. for sure. Oh my God. But it was exactly the message she needed. Yeah. And I think that's the thing too, is we have to be okay with like not feeling like we're connecting with the information, you know, like you may, whatever you're saying, you're like, I don't know if this is right. If this, is, this sounds weird to me. But then when you say it, the other person is making that full connection and totally understanding yeah. it. So you have to have that faith and trust in just whatever is coming to you just say it. And on the other side, even if the client doesn't like it, tough. Yeah. Um, I read a woman again, all oh my good stories are Kitchener, Ontario. Nah. I did a major show up there three times a year. And I saw some challenges that I told the woman about. And she gets up and she looks at me and she says, you suck. And she walks away. Yeah, I'm fine. Who's the first person in my chair next time I'm there? She mm. sits down. She says, Last time I said, you sucked. I said, yes, I remember. Because you told me that I was going to take in a border and then I was going to want to sell my house. And I thought that was all bull. But my daughter got pregnant and moved home. And now I'm going to sell my house to raise my grandson. And I still don't like you, but I want to know what else you see. Don't shoot the messenger. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And yeah, you know, you got to trust, you got to trust the process, you know, and, and sometimes I'll hear like weird things that I like, why am I doing this? And, you know, and mm -hmm. so one time, you know, I had heard, you know, crochet a hat and give it to like the bagger at the grocery store. And I'm like, what? Like, why would I even do that? But, you know, it's like, you have to go through that process of, of, like complying with the things that you hear to learn to be of service, you know, in that process to become that clear conduit. And so like, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do it. And I don't know, like, how that ended up, you know, beyond the moment of like me giving it to them and then walking away, you know, I mean, of course, I told them why, but, you know, it's, it's just learning to like surrender to that process. You have to. Sometimes you'll know where it comes from. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, something has happened to you. And so your mind is in that track and you pick up to do something. It, yeah. it doesn't have to come out of the blue. But if you know I'm feeling this way and I'm doing this because of what just happened to me, it doesn't invalidate it. It could be the way spirit is helping you heal. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can recognize where it comes from. And that's yeah. important because one of the other things, professionals, you can't go around like my aura don't stink. Kids, we're all normal people. All of us are going to be in, you know, as a friend of mine says, taking a dirt nap. We mm -hmm. are not the end of the world. We're yeah. here in service and that's it. Yeah. What do you think makes a good psychic? Living what they do. Mm -hmm. respecting what they do, respecting their clients and general social conventions. You know, 
They're not going to mm-hmm. meet you at the door in a bikini or a bathrobe. Mm-hmm. So they yeah. understand that people are looking for information. They don't upsell. Well, you know, I know you're having problems in love, but here's a $600 candle. No. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, I tend to downsell. No, I don't sell candles. But I do have um, much more complicated and therefore more expensive consultations. But if you can do a half hour reading with me, just a general reading, you don't need a soul plan. You don't. Yeah. And I, that's why I downsell people, but that's why they trust me and they come back. Mm-hmm. I will tell someone this could work for you, but you don't need it. It's a luxury. This will work. This is practical. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So you had uh, mentioned at one point, um, about psychic tools and that some some psychic tools were good for certain situations some psychic tools were weren't and that the person who is receiving the reading should know the differences in these things so that they can be an active part of asking yes. for these things for instance um if you were looking for precision a good date to get married um, what to do about the vibe in a name you're considering, you know, it's what I call your Elton John name. Corby Mitlad is my Elton John name. I use my uh, legal name very little and very private so I don't get calls at three in the morning. Um, that's the kind of thing astrology, numerology could work really, really well for you. Mm-hmm. But if you're looking for situationals, you know, what's going to happen in work because of this, or my son is looking at four different colleges, Baylor, Ohio State, Stanford, and Yale, what's best for him, then you can use things like cards because they give you choice. Um, If you're very much visual, you might look for someone who does spirit art if you really want a picture of your guides or the dead people around you, things like that. That's why it's important that you know what you want to know. Don't come to me for spirit art because I can't draw a stick figure with a sharp pencil and a loud prayer. Me, cards, past lives, spirit guides. Those are my big things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mediumship, of course. How do you receive information when you're doing a reading? And what no clairs idea. are you? You don't know. I just get out of the way. I have Mm -hmm. never really had formal training. Mm -hmm. It's always been do it, do it, do it, learn, do it. Um, When I look at the cards, they're a doorway. And I tell you what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. I hear the voice sometimes of the dead people um, or I see. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess I use all of it pretty much. Um, Whatever spirit needs to do to get the information out, I'm on board. It's fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what I teach too. I mean, I'm explaining to people that with your your energetic senses, you know, if if you're looking at physical senses, for an example, and you're having a meal, right? You're not just like tasting your food without smelling it and seeing it and touching it and whatever, like it's a full sensory experience. And I think that our psychic abilities work similarly in that, you know, we don't just see something or hear something or whatever, we're receiving a full sensory, you know, experience is just whether or not we're paying attention to all the energetic information that we're receiving in that moment so yeah they tend to like combine or piggyback on each other so they do they do yeah yeah no i love that i love that um and you know you have like a couple different books don't you like not just the yep oh let's see first one is actually um a self-help book that my clients requested because the four things they kept stumbling on were Clarity, adaptability, simplicity, and making friends with stress. Mm-hmm. And I kid that I will give a hundred bucks to anybody who can legitimately say they've never bought a self-help book. We all do. I love I them. I love them. The first one that I read in 1968 when I was 13, and I remember the first paragraph. Judy has a groovy wardrobe. Remember, this is the 60s. <laughs> her makeup is fab, but her hair is far out. 
but nobody likes Judy because Judy's fat. So right there, hundreds of thousands of American teenagers were, were told, you are worthless, except wow. for you. Yeah. And that's yeah. what too many self-help books do. Um, yeah. There was one that I was looking at with research that said you have to get up two hours early every morning to do yoga and avoid food with leptin. Well, if you're a single mom with two kids and two jobs in Milwaukee, you are not going to do that. So that book sets you up to fail from the first pitch. No. What this does, this says, here's some of the dumb things I did. Here's maybe a client story and here's some suggestions. Mm -hmm. But at the end of each chapter are what I call the adventure pages. And you cannot answer the adventure pages by um, just looking to see what I said. You have to come up with this stuff yourself. Mm. And the chapter that I love for that is the one that is about when perfect destroys good. The questions I ask you, where do you beat yourself up most often? Why? Reimagine one of those times with the idea that good can triumph over perfect. What does it look like now? How would your life change if you stopped thinking perfection was the only correct response to a project or situation. Right there, you find out you're Mm. your own best expert and you and your best bud could buy the book on the same day, read the chapters at the same rate, finish it on the same day. And if you each answered those questions at the end of each chapter, you'd have two different personal manuals Mm. for getting your life in order. That's that. I love Um, that. I love that because yeah, we have so much like a uh, perfection pr- paralysis, you know, and and we yeah. like I have that all the time, and it prevents me from doing the things. Yeah, so I love that. The other two are psychic, and we've touched on them a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, good psychic guidance is art, and you shouldn't settle for a forgery. For that, it's the psychic yellow brick road: how to find the real wizards and avoid the flying monkey. I love and- the name of that. I'm good with titles. Um, And that tells you what we can do, what we can't, what questions to ask, what's not going to work for you, when to run, because you're not going to be with a good psychic, the danger signals. So that's a safety book. And there's no other book out there like that. Mm. And the third one is, yes, my darlings, if you're crazy enough to want to do what I do, you've got the magic who needs a genie. For 18 years, I was on the road 45 weekends a year. My nickname was the Travel Channel. But Spirit kept saying, we'd like you off the road, please. And I kept saying, wait, wait, wait. It's too much fun being a Hilton Diamond. They do the we're not worthy thing when I walk in the door. So Spirit said, all right, we're going to handle this. And in July of 19, I got a herniated disc and pinched nerve, which makes having mm-hmm. triplets feel like a tea party, I would think. No, no. Um, four months later, they got me in shape, but they said, we're really sorry, but your career's over. You can't load in heavy boxes and you can't be in the car for 10 hours. So mm-hmm. I scrambled to get my business online successfully got it all online in January of 2020, which was the year that started Murder Hornet Bingo and Hold My Beer. Anyone who was just on circuit, their business tanked. My business has just gone like this because spirit knew what I needed to do. Right, right. This year, again, I feel it changing. I'm in a one year numerologically. Um, It looks nothing like my normal years do. But instead of panicking, I'm saying, all right, spirit, bring it. And spirit is starting to show me what it wants me to do instead. It's still psychic work, but it's in a different arena. Mm -hmm. So that's why I I wrote the books, Mm -hmm. because I want to pass on the nonfiction knowledge that I've got. Um, Will there be another one? Probably. But spirit hasn't told me exactly what it is I need to teach people yet. As soon as they do, I'll start writing. Yeah. Well, I love that you've done this because there is like you saying like nonfiction version of of that information out there. And I feel like there is a lot of that fiction information out there in the in the spiritual and esoteric world. And like, how do people start like sorting through all of that, you know, to find what is the nonfiction in that? Mm -hmm. Exactly the point. I'm what I call a way shower, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to kid and say I wanted to be like Steve Behrman, Swami Beyond Ananda, and Wayne Dyer. Funny as hell, but normal enough you could borrow my lawnmower. But at 69, I'm not sure I'm ever going to be famous the way I used to want to in my 20s and 30s. Mm-hmm. Way showers have knowledge for you. And along your journey, you come to our little hut, we give you what you need, 
and off you go. And people may not remember us from page 82 of your story, but that doesn't matter. Spirit knows. We did what we were here to do. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. How did you, like, I'm I'm working on a book right now too, and um, I'm about 60,000 uh, words in. And for me, this information, you know, just kind of like it had an origin reason reason for coming through and and the information is being channeled through me how do you receive the information that you're supposed to put in those books i live it everything yeah. in all three of those books i've lived mm. um the clarity adaptability simplicity making friends with stress there's a lot of my stories in that Psychic Elbert Road are all the experiences that I've had with clients over the years. And you've got the magic is everything that happened to me when I was on the road, mm -hmm. including some of the stuff you don't think about. I call those Corby gets candid. For instance, in the back of the book, I show you my sign in sheet that I mm -hmm. insist that my client fills out. You can either do it with their address or just their email. But unless the client physically cannot do it, you get their handwriting. Why? Because years ago in London, Ontario, I read for a young man who didn't like what I told him, and I found an anonymous death threat on my table the next morning. But it was wow. handwriting. I was able to match up that handwriting with my sheet, hand it off to the police, and they took care of it. Wow. I had no idea this that you have to deal with that. This is not love and like kumbaya kids, especially not in this country at this point. Mm -hmm. You have to protect yourself. Wow. You have a disclaimer on your booth that says by buying a reading and having the reading you say you agree to it's all for you you make your decisions i'm not forcing you to do anything in legalese because otherwise they could come back at you mm -hmm. when i record a session it would be um all right it's march 31st 2024 it's corby midlight i'm doing a reading for john john i must remind you for new york and Connecticut, if he's in Connecticut law, this is for entertainment only, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I keep a copy of that recording. Wow. Um, unfortunately, we are not respected the way we were when we were Druids. It's why mm -hmm. people don't pay us in chickens and cloaks and firewood. <laughs> yeah. But you have to think carefully, keep yourself safe so that you can continue to do your work and help more people. Mm-hmm. What do you think are some like danger signals that um, people should be mindful of either either, you know, when they're receiving a reading or if they're giving a reading, you know, either way? All right. Things that you need to watch out for. Um, <clears throat> the psychic tells you that your house, your money, your jewelry is cursed, whatever, and they have to take it and um, put it on their altar to bless it, you know, your portfolio of stocks, your bank statements, whatever. No. Even if you've known me for a million years, do you know my cleaning lady or the people that come to dinner? You don't. I don't want to be responsible for that kind of stuff. So trust me, I can bless it from here. Second, they tell you that somehow in a past life you were connected to them so you have to give them money or let them live with you or whatever. This is a story from years ago. My, my dear friend, Reverend Sharon, who's passed. Um, she was in one of the early group readings. And the person must have seen the word sucker printed across her forehead. Because in the middle of everything, she went, Sharon, today is your lucky day. Do you know why? When I was high priest of Ramses II, you were the novice that had me killed. And today we can clear your karma. Mm. Sharon. Um, needed intervention before she lost everything because of this person. Wow. I don't care if I know that I was Erwin Boma, German World War I pilot, and I figure out that you're the Red Baron. I would not come up to you and go, Herr Rittmeister, how's the plane flying? You know, that's a hook. 15 years you've been coming to me forever. I might say to you, do you know what I figured out about you the first time? And I tell you, and then we all go out for German dinner. That's not a hook anymore because you know my measure. Um, people tell you that whatever you believe is wrong. You have to believe the way they do. No, I don't care if you're Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, Muslim, pagan, or believe in Ralph the Wonder Dog. I really don't. 
I just say you have to know somebody is up there, loves you, and wants the best for you. That's all you need. God really doesn't care how you come into the grocery store. Deli, florist, health and beauty age, just get in there, frankly. Mm. And if you, if the psychic makes moves on you, that's sexual predation, pure and simple. And for that, I only say this. You wouldn't sleep with your priest. You wouldn't sleep with your doctor. You wouldn't sleep with your shrink. Why are you going to sleep with your psychic? You fall in love with us, lovely, marry us, have nice indigo children, but find somebody else to read for you who can keep their ego out of it. I do mm. not read for family. Never. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, and too can, too close too. Like, I mean, it's hard enough to like we can't ever usually read for ourselves, and then that same closeness would apply to our families as well. Like, I wouldn't mm -hmm. try to read for my daughter or you know anyone like that at all. We because, send them to uh, the person we think is best yeah. that we might go to when we need a reading. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, when you started this whole like life process with you know doing psychic readings and all these things what is it that really helped you to trust the information that was coming through i got out of the way mm. i wasn't always correct but you know it's like what happened in kitchener i don't like you but i want to know what else you see um and i always tell people even the best of us are not 80, you know, or 85%. God's 100%. He's not doing Zoom readings. I'm sorry. Um, the disclaimer, reminding entertainment for only. I have to put those guardrails on it. Because once I do all of that, then I get out of the way and I'll just let spirit, you know, tell him whatever. If I say, I have no idea, you know, I'm trying to get your Uncle Harold, but I'm seeing a plaid rutabaga on a fire engine, I just tell him. And if they say, oh my God, that's the drawing I made for him in second grade that was on their refrigerator for 20 years. You didn't need to figure it out. Mm -hmm. All you needed to do was get out of the way and put it out there. Well, what is the best way to get out of the way? I mean, I think that at least for me, that had been like one of my biggest problems was getting out of the way of the information. And and pe most people that I talk to, I think that's their biggest hurdle is how do I We're get out the of the way? tool that spirit yeah. uses. No. You know, it's like if the hammer goes strutting around on our back deck and says, man, aren't those nails great? I got it. No, somebody held you and wanged your head against the nail, kiddo. Mm -hmm. We're the hammer. Spirit holds us. Mm -hmm. And the less we let our ego get involved, the better we're going to be. Mm -hmm. And stepping away from that fear and insecurity. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. What kind of advice do you have for people who are interested in learning how to like develop their psychic abilities? Well, I recommend to them, I did not write this book, but what I learned with decades ago, and it's called Opening oh, to Channel. Oh yeah, I love that book. That's by Samaya Roman and Dwayne Packer. Mm -hmm. It's thorough, it's kind, it runs you through the exercises, it keeps you safe. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, don't just go and grab a Ouija board, please. Ouija boards, when you don't know how to ground, center, and shield, it's like opening your door in a strange neighborhood and yelling free beer. You don't know who's out there, but they heard you and you're coming. Yeah. Yeah, my my daughter and her bestie <clears throat> like to use those. And so she came, but thankfully she came to me ahead of time and she was like, mom, how do we use this safely? And what do we do? And what are the parameters? And I'm like, thank God you came to me first, you know, but she's know. made a, a few bad mistakes with that one. Mm -hmm. You got to You got to keep your, your rounding up. What drives me crazy, and this is a thing now, there are rugs, big area rugs that are Ouija boards. And people let their Roombas play on it. What? Like a planchette. No. I'm sorry. And sometimes cats will ride on them. I don't want that cat, you know, taking over. Yeah, my no thanks. No thanks. Yeah, you know, my daughter my daughter made a mistake the other day. And I'm like, you better go fix that mistake. Because, you know, they're, they're teenagers, you know, so they're going to think they're going to do stupid things. And she had been communicating with this spirit like um, for a while now. So she felt pretty comfortable with it. It was like, 
you know, a guy from the 1800s who's a poet and like all this stuff and whatever. And so they felt like really connected, but they're like, she decided she was going to like marry him and they were going to have like a spirit to spirit, like communication marriage. And I'm like, you need to go take care of this right now because you don't understand the parameters of what, what he thinks, you know, a lifetime marriage is and what you think a lifetime marriage is. So yes. go take care of this now. <laughs> you know, people say it's in the toy department. How dangerous can it be? When yeah. that happens and I'm doing a lecture, I say, okay, everybody here, who's got a kid or a grandchild under 10? People mm -hmm. raise their hands. All right, you. What's kid's name? Josh. How old is he? Eight. All right. Josh, he comes to you and says, Grandma, Grandma, I got all A's on my report card. You said we could go pick out a toy. Let's go. And he drags you into the toy department and points to a box and says, my first chainsaw. Mm. You going to let him play with it by himself? No, of course no. not. No. Yeah, no. Ouija boards yeah. can be just as dangerous. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And and I'm thankful that she's, for the most part, fairly safe. But, of course, she's a teenager, so... You know, mm -hmm. there's things that they're going to do without my consent. <laughs> but yep. yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, I did a whole video on on the Ouija board, which I which I found pretty interesting. The whole historical aspect about how mm -hmm. originally they were done in families' houses all the time as as a way to communicate with uh, with the deceased. And it wasn't until you know I think it was the either the 80s or the 90s with the horror movies that then yeah. they really made that shift towards like the negative. But before yeah. that. You know, it was all about like family gatherings. If you remember in Downton Abbey, when Matthew's original fiance died, um, Daisy and Anna were playing with a Ouija board downstairs in the servants' quarters. And what was spelled out is something about, I forgive, may they be happy. And they're going, what, what, what? And obviously that was supposed to be um, Lavinia telling Matthew he could marry Mary. But it isn't like that, kids. That's no. a script. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, and that we need to be mindful of, like, like what I'm trying to say is that essentially it's built up by the media, all these things and our understanding of these tools, you know, whether it's the Tarot or the Ouija or whatever, they're all tools and, and you have to have respect when using them and, and have, you know, certain boundaries. So what kinds of things would you, advice would you give for people who are wanting to use the tarot? Um, yeah. Remember the tarot is just ink on paper, right? Yeah. That's number one. Um, books that I recommend, excuse me, number one, Tarot for Yourself by Mary Greer. Mary Greer is a tarot grandmaster. It's great. Mm. And the other one that I still keep on my desk, believe it or not, is a little thing called Power Tarot. Oh. And it's by Trish McGregor and Phyllis Vega. What I like about it is it goes through majors, courts, minor cards, and they break it up um, in a reading, then work, romance, finances, health, spirituality, empowerment. This is really great when someone new is trying to figure out, well, how does this card work for their job, job hunt? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it also has literally a hundred different spreads in the back. Yeah. Really great. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. No. And then um and oracle cards too, you know, being mindful of those things as well. You yes, know? but now oracle cards are very different because mm. there are no rules. It's very loosey goosey, which is wonderful. If yeah. you're just starting out, I tell people tarot uh, tarot is great, but start with oracle cards to really learn to trust your own intuition. I teach a course called Deca Dance, mm. and people learn that they can pick up any Oracle deck and read it. Mm. They start out reading their own with a partner, then the, they and the partner switch their decks. Then I make them go across the room and switch decks, and they're amazed to find they can read with whatever deck they pick up if they just get out of their own way and trust. Yeah, 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 definitely. My, once you've learned yeah. that, then you can go to tarot with all of its rules and regs. 
Right. Yeah, I had a I had a friend who, you know, taught me how to just read off of anything, you know, whether or not mm-hmm. it's a deck of cards or, you know, I mean, all the standard things too, like tea leaves and whatever. But I mean, yep. without the knowledge of, you know, how to do that, but just doing it and just trusting mm-hmm. because it's just it's just a device, a mechanism that you can use to access, you know, the information that you have, you know, that mm-hmm. can flow through you. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. Um, very cool. So, what did I? I wanted to ask you something, and then I totally forgot it because that happens to me. Um, We're at that age, darling. I know, and it's. I actually I went um, to a doctor a year ago because I had. Um, what's it called brain fog see I'm like not remembering things and I had it suddenly and um after a major headache and so I went and got a cat scan and they're like everything is fine but I'm like and so now ever since then I've had this where I can't remember things or recall things that are like sitting in my mind so yay me (laughs) but yeah they all say it's like age and I'm like I don't know because it was sudden so I don't know if that's like a thing. See, now age. you're someone I'd say go talk to Stacy mm. because if she can look in the DNA, she can look. In, she has seen brain tumors. People have missed, and no, I am not saying you have a brain tumor. Yeah, no, totally. Like, well, that's what I thought. I was like, oh my god, I have a brain tumor because that was the first thing my mind went to. Yeah. But actually, I would be very interested in talking to her anyway because I have a lot of things that are um, undiagnosed, and all my doctors are like, you're fine, but I'm like, I'm not fine. So, yeah, I've been trying to figure those things out intuitively, but it's so hard to read for yourself. It's so hard to know, like, you know, and it's just we're too close to ourselves to figure those things out. So, yes. Yeah. Um, What do what is a good um, approach for people to. begin to develop their abilities like what are some first steps that you know people learn how to ground center and shield that's boot camp Mm -hmm. you're going to go play upstairs with people and things you do not know make sure that you're solid Mm -hmm. you can't be thrown off and you know you're safe Mm -hmm. then you keep a you keep a little notebook or a certain part of your cell phone and you just you know today i had this hunch i followed it i didn't what happened yeah. It's trial and error. And that's the other thing is realize you're not going to learn everything. Mm-hmm. Choose wisely, choose carefully, choose whatever really draws you. You're not going to be good at everything. Find yeah. one or two or three things and that's where you drill down. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. And I'm always, I'm also teaching people how to be like the inner observer, you know, the scientific observer of your abilities. And the more that you, you know, observe like them in action, and then you, you know, you validate them, you know, like, hey, that was, you know, an intuitive hit or that was a whatever. Because if you're just like, that was just my imagination. That's why I make you write them down. And what did you do? And date and time and what followed? Yeah, yeah. And it, like that, keeping a psychic journal about all those things, you know, so that you can go back and be like, oh, yeah, I totally, you know, did do that, or I figured that out, or I connect, made those connections, you know, and, and this actually reminds me too of like, you know, when you're sharing information in a reading, right? And the person is like, that doesn't mean anything to me. And then you're like, record this or write it down, because later, that person's going to go, Oh, I understand what that psychic was saying. Just now. like the the woman in Kitchener who didn't believe about the border and selling her house. Yeah, that's the exact same thing. Yeah, absolutely, and that happens, you know, more than you realize. So give your psychic like the benefit of the doubt, you know mm-hmm. that that it may come together later, you know, and that yes. they don't. You may not know that, that information right now. So exactly yeah. the point. Yeah. Definitely. So you've got other books coming in store or you're thinking about Um, it? It's, as I said, everything is changing this year. Um, There's something at the end of the year that is going to come out, but Spirit hasn't given me my instruction book yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. 
Well, um, what is a good way for people to like reach out to you and what would they be reaching out to you for? Like you do a lot of different things, right? So you're I doing do. psychic readings. Are you still doing uh, mediumship as well? What yes, types of things? I, I, people come to me for four things. Mm-hmm. The everyday tour bus, house, car, job, kids, finances. Okay, God, you put me here. What the hell? Past lies. Why am I afraid of oatmeal? And who was I in 1642, Belgium? I want to speak to my spirit guide, Binky, and has dead Aunt Mabel. I mean, that's what they come to me for. All the stuff I do, plus other more specialized consultations. CorbyMitlai.com is where you find all of it. Uh, dozens and dozens of articles, uh, links to the podcasts that I've been on. My own podcast is there and updated every Monday. So that's the whole key. Yes, you can find me on Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon, but you want to get right to me, it's corbymitline.com. Okay. Okay. I love that. I love that. And then, um, God, the the brain fog today is just in rare form. And so it's so awesome. But um, what are some, uh, ad- what's some advice that, that you could give to people who are, um, listening today, um, as kind of a closure for like something that you want to share with them? Remember that we're all living the examined life. What's that? This thing is happening to me. I may not want it to happen, but it's happening. How do I get through it? So the yeah. first thing you ask yourself is what can I learn from this? Second thing I asked myself, because I am a teacher, is how can I teach with it? But then you have to go next. Don't stay stuck. And the example I use is in 1973, I was the Betty Crocker State Homemaker, New Jersey, for tomorrow. Uh, I even won a trip to Washington, but I couldn't tour tour the White House because it was Watergate. I don't tell people about that now. It's part of my history. It's made me what I am, but I work on what is me now. That's the examined life. And it will open up so many possibilities to you when you go next and don't stay stuck. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. And it's so important to live that examined life and really, you know, and to continue to grow. Like I'm, you know, I'm 54 and, and every day I continue to find ways to grow and to develop and, and to examine, you know, understand myself. So I love that. I love that you share that. Well, I want to thank you so much for, you know, joining me today and for sharing all this wisdom, because I think it's so important for people to understand, you know, that there are people out there that are scammers and whatever, and to really understand like the genuine, like psychic and what they really do, their tools and capabilities. So you really shared a lot of wisdom today. And I appreciate that so much. Happy to do it. It was a great time. Oh, thank you.